Hi guys, this is Mrs. P. I wanted to read you guys a really special story today. I've been thinking about you all so much over the last couple weeks and I can't believe that we're not able to sit on the carpet together and read, but I thought that this would be the next best thing. So I have a special story. This is called The Story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leaf. And it's such a good story. My daughter, Victoria, who's four and a half, it's probably her top three favorite books to read in bed. So I thought I'd share it with you all. Maybe you've read it before, or you've seen it. It's a really special story and it takes place in Spain. Spain is a country in Europe. So it takes like 12, 13 hours to get there on the airplane, okay? So The Story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leaf. Once upon a time in Spain, there was a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. It looks like they're having so much fun. But not Ferdinand. Look at him, he's walking away. I wonder if he's sad. He liked to just sit quietly and smell the flowers. Do you guys like to smell flowers? I do. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in its shade all day long and smell the flowers. Look at them. They're out there fighting and butting heads and he's just relaxing under the shade. He's like, you guys go have fun. I'll just hang out right here. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. I see Mama saying, oh, I hope he's okay out there. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here where I can just sit quietly and smell the flowers. Okay. His mother saw that he was not lonesome. That means he wasn't lonely. And because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. She says, okay, see you later. No problem. You be happy up there. See, and her little bell says mother. Can you see that? <laughs> it's a cow bell. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. As you can see how big he is. At one week, he was that short. And then at three months, he grew a little bit taller. And one year, and now he's two years old. He's still younger than you guys are. He's still a little toddler. <laughs> all the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight at the bullfights in Madrid. Madrid is the big capital of Spain. It's a big city and they have big bullfights there and people go and they, they watch. It's like a big, exciting event for them. See, and they're all reading the sign. It says, bullfights at the Stadium Madrid. So all of them are getting excited. Do you guys think Ferdinand's getting excited? But not Ferdinand. He still liked to just sit quietly under the cork tree and smell those flowers. One day, five men came in very funny hats to pick the biggest, fastest, roughest bull to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. Oh, here they are. Look at them. One, two, three, four, five. Look at those silly hats. All the other bulls ran around snorting and butting, leaping and jumping, so the men would think that they were very, very strong and fierce and pick them. Ah, look at them, they're showing off. These guys are probably like, ooh, I like that one, I like that one. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him and he didn't care. So he went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. There he goes, hopping along. To his cork tree and little butterflies are following him. Can you guys see that? <laughs> <laughs> he 
He didn't look where he was sitting. Uh-oh. And instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. Ouch! Oh no. <laughs> look at his eyes. Well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him. And that's just what this bee did to Ferdinand. <sighs> Can you guys do a yowch? Do that now. <laughs> wow, did it hurt. Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting, butting and pawing the ground as if he were crazy. Oh, oh no. The five men saw him and they all shouted with joy. Yay, there he is. He was the largest and fiercest bull of all, just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. They're saying, oh, look at this guy. Do you think he's really trying to show off for those, those five men? Not really. He is in a lot of pain. So they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. Oh, there he goes. Oh no, can you see his face and his head? How do you think he feels? Oh no, what's gonna happen, you guys? What a day it was. Flags were flying, bands were playing. Wow, it's a really festive day. And there goes the parade. They're marching through the streets down there and these are all the people high up in their little apartments waving flags and excited. So Ferdinand is down there in that parade. And all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. And this, this sign says, Ferdinando. That's his name in Spanish. Galeria. So it's like, go that way. That's where you're going to go. This is where the big event's going to happen. They had a parade into the bull ring. Here they come. Do, 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 do. So here he comes on his horse. Oh, man. First came the bandilleros with long, sharp pins with ribbons on them to stick in the bowl and make him mad. <gasps> Next came the picadores who rode skinny horses and they had long spears to stick in the bowl and make him madder. Then came the matador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and he bowed to the ladies and he had a red cape and a sword and he was supposed to stick the bowl last of all. There he is. Then came the bowl and you know who that was, don't you? Ferdinand. There he is peeking out in the shadows. <laughs> they called him Ferdinand the Fierce. And all the bandilleros were afraid of him and the picadores were afraid of him and the matador was scared stiff. <gasps> Look at their eyeballs. Ah! Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horns around. Can you imagine this huge stadium full of people if you've ever been to a baseball game? It's kind of like that with a ton of people all around shouting and screaming and yay. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers and all the ladies' lovely hair and he just sat down quietly and he smelled. Oh my goodness, can you imagine? He wouldn't fight and be fierce no matter what they did. He just sat and he smelled. And the bandilleros were mad and the picadores were madder and the matador was so mad he cried because he couldn't show off with his cape and his sword. Look at him, he's just sitting down. He's like, doo doo doo, it smells really nice in this stadium. And everybody is saying, no, no, and he's stomping the ground. They're very frustrated. So they had to take Ferdinand home. So they're leaving the stadium and they're going and they're taking him in the cart. I'm gonna take him back home. And for all I know, he is sitting there still under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. And he is very happy. The end. 
Hope you guys enjoyed that book. It is so cute and it probably taught you a little lesson that you could probably just be yourself no matter what. And if everyone is trying to do something and if everyone's acting a certain way and you know that that's not right or that's not really who you are in your heart, you stay true to who you are and you do what makes you happiest. Okay, you guys, I will read you another story really soon. I miss you all, lots of hugs, and we'll talk soon. Bye.